Welcome to our Saturday simulcast. And I'm with, joined by Tom Dienhart. I want to thank our sponsor, the Purdue Union Club Hotel, uh, for its gracious sponsorship uh, of this weekly feature. And tonight, uh, Tom, uh, you're live from Kinnick Stadium. Uh, an unbelievable, uh, stunning uh, victory for the Boilermakers today, 24 to 7 over Iowa. And uh, I guess just want to get your initial reactions to really what was a remarkable, remarkable uh, win for Purdue. Yeah, you know, where do you start, right? It's uh, just a, a big victory, Alan. One of the biggest, uh, you know, not just in Jeff Brom's era, obviously, but, you know, in, in, I think in, in, in Purdue history, honestly, Purdue doesn't go on the road and meet top five teams very often. And boy, uh, tonight they did that. Uh, about 11 and a half point underdog. Of course, you know the history better than me, but Purdue's first road win versus a top five team since 1974. First against a Big Ten team on the road. That was a top five team since 1964. So yeah, not many people thought Purdue was going to get out of here with the win, Alan, but they certainly did. And offense and defense both did their jobs today, uh, without a doubt, especially the defense. Seven points, Alan. Seven points. I mean, this defense doesn't get enough credit week in and week out. It shows up. It plays well. Finally got some takeaways today. Finally got some sacks today. Got some big stops. And we could talk for 30 minutes just about the defense alone. So, to me, that was obviously a big headline story and a huge part of this one today. Well, George Karloftis uh, was extremely disruptive, but it wasn't just him. I mean, it was Jalen Graham. It was uh, – Marvin Grant making plays, Cam Allen, what with two picks, right? Uh, that was just uh, it was stunning. Uh, we've seen the defense play at this level for most of the season, but to see him completely shut, I think I, Iowa had six yards in offense through about the first, uh, want to say, first 22, 23 minutes of the second half. I mean, it was complete domination. Yeah, I mean, just and, by, by, and then before we get too much into David Bell, but David Bell by himself, Allen, outgained Iowa. Yeah. How, many, how many total yards did Iowa have? Yeah, I seen Iowa had a, Iowa had 271 total yards. David Bell, you know, I guess he came close to outgaining them by himself. But again, just a remarkable effort by Bell. And for Iowa to be held under 300 yards of offense was just extraordinary by this team. And, and uh, again, the sacks, the takeaways, the pressures. And now the sequence in the second half, after the T.J. Sheffield fumble out of bounds, it calls the yeah. touchback. Iowa gets the ball on the 20. The defense comes right out on the field and gets a three and out. I mean, you talk about a tone setter. That was a heck of a tone setter right there by that defense. Yeah, and what do you, you know, obviously scheme and Iowa's got some issues uh, to some extent, but Purdue really just took it to them too. I mean, yes, uh, they did run the football a little bit at times, especially – first play from scrimmage and it looked like things could be could be go a little bit of a different way but Purdue just got itself established and it won the game against one of the best teams in the trenches they won it in the trenches yeah good you know that that's Iowa football right um always tough up front now I don't think this Iowa team Allen especially on the offensive line is up to its usual ilk yeah um they've got a great center but if you talk to enough people, even before the, even before the game today, if you talk to enough people, boy, they, 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 there are still some doubts about this line. There's, there's some youngsters playing up front that may not be quite ready, but still Purdue, Purdue did a good job manhandling that line for the most part. And they could never get the, the ground game really going. I mean, Tyler Goodson, most people thought he was probably going to have a big game out in 12 carries, 68 yards. Big plays today were almost nil for Iowa, too. Goodson had a 32-yard run early. As far as receiving goes, there was a 31-yard catch and a 28-yard catch by, by the tight end. So, you know, big plays for Iowa were really few and far between. None were really pivotal or, or hurt Purdue at all tonight. So that, that's always big, the big play factor. And Purdue had its share of big plays, especially, of course, David Bell providing some huge <laughs> kick. It was like a 60-yarder. Well, I think like a 47-yarder as well. He just continues to amaze doesn't he yeah I, I think from and again I'm watching the game on on ABC but looking at this from a national perspective in the old days this would almost guaranteed uh David Bell would be would be catapult to first team all-american as if he probably 
is in that conversation anyway. I mean, that was as good a performance. George Karloftis, you know, we talked about that as well, made himself a lot of money today as if he needs to win and if he decides when he decides to go to the NFL. Uh, he showed that uh, he is of, of a, uh, a very high caliber. And uh, when you do it on national stage, and who'd have thought this? I mean, look at the go back to the I, Illinois game at 13 to 9. You go, oh, gosh, this isn't going well. Then you can't beat Minnesota. Uh, you know, this is and, – and that's the amazing thing about college football is two weeks later, and Purdue and Jeff Brown talked about this, that he had to, you know, kind of waller in, in anonymity. You know, nobody was giving him any, any props, and people were wondering about the direction of the program two weeks ago, to be honest. And, you know, maybe that's not fair, but there were some. And yet two weeks later, you beat the number two team in the, in the country and you beat them handily. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, they had two weeks to stew about this, Alan. And, yeah. you know, Jeff Brom talked about that in the post game a little bit. Not a lot of fun to sit there for two weeks coming off that tough loss to Minnesota. Uh, I'm sure there are some doubts running through your mind. You got problems you got to fix. And uh, are you going to get everything buttoned up and are you going to be ready to go? coming out of this bye week and oh by the way you get to go play the number two team in the country on the road coming out of the bye week but alan we have to talk too about the quarterbacks and how they yeah. were today i mean have you seen anything like that in all your years watching pretty football what was it three snap three separate snaps too they ran three they, they had three different quarterbacks that uh, made plays I've never seen them use three obviously and i i thought that that was the essence of what Brom will in and in, 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 you know, give him credit and give his staff credit. They were willing to say this. I know he said on the radio show, he said, man, I look like an idiot if that didn't work. <laughs> well, it worked. And you've been talking about it for well in advance of anybody, Tom, talking about Austin Burton. But I didn't expect I knew Jack Plummer could do this. I just didn't expect that. I thought that was a good wrinkle, a great wrinkle. And I just thought Purdue did exactly what it had to do. And that was to get Iowa off balance from the start of this game and, and just punch them in the mouth. And boy, Purdue just did that. Yeah, they certainly did. I was like you, Alan. I, I was surprised we saw Jack Plummer in this role and uh, he did a nice job. I just thought Aiden O'Connell would be better suited. Just, I, I got to think maybe he's a better overall athlete, but they know more than I do, obviously. No, you mean, you meant Austin Burton. Yeah, yeah Austin Burton. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and then Austin Burton, um, uh, you know, he got to play his role tonight, and Plummer did pretty similar roles. They both got to pass the ball. At least Austin Burton got to try to pass the ball. Um, officially, um, Austin Burton, as a passer, didn't complete a pass. Jack Plummer was one for two. Yeah. So, again, you know, and, and who knows what this sets up, Alan. This is on film now. Everybody's got it, but Jeff Brom's got myriad things I'm sure he can do coming off anything these three, three quarterbacks can run from a passing standpoint and from a Russian standpoint. So this is a whole nother quagmire of stuff that opponents going to have to deal with. Makes Purdue harder to defend, obviously, and, and really dresses up a ground game, Alan, that, let, let's be honest, <laughs> by itself is substandard. So this really helps, you know. And it's, I know the sacks going to rushing yardage, but who would have thought Purdue would outrush Iowa? Well, they outrushed Iowa today. I think it was 86 to 76. And King DeRue was very serviceable, right? Yeah. Um, King DeRoot, 18 carries for 48 yards. He's a good little pass catcher out of the backfield, too. So, yeah, this sort of dresses up the offense, gives us gives it another dimension. And like I said, really helps spruce up a ground game that needs sprucing up. Well, Dylan Downing makes a big run at the right <laughs> time. I mean, I mean, it was one carry, but it makes a big play. Yeah. It was just full of stuff that they were at least be able to do what they want to do uh, when running the football. And you had the sense that they could do it. And uh, that was uh, really surprising to me. Uh, but again, I think you hit the nail on the head. They had Iowa off balance. They didn't know what exactly what was coming. And, you know, even Aiden O'Connell gets in and gets a touchdown as well and made a play yeah. with his feet. Uh, I thought that was a good sign as well. David Bell, though, hard to put that one in perspective. We talked about Chris Daniels is the still the Purdue record holder, 301 yards against that Nick Saban 1999 Michigan State team, who was ranked in the top five in, in, in yeah. Los Angeles State, even Purdue beat them. But 
David Bell, uh, just just is amazing. I thought Jeff Brom, at least on the radio show, I don't know if he said it in the post game. He said he was surprised that Iowa chose to defend Bell more on a one on one basis. That surprised him a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess that's probably surprised me too. Bell seemed to be open, but he was also making. He seemed to be in the simpatico with Aiden O'Connell in terms of what they were doing on the offensive end. Yeah, you're right. You know, Iowa's defense is always predicated on not wanting to let you go deep and make big plays, soft coverage, big cushion. And you know what, Alan? Purdue took what Iowa was given. Aiden O'Connell delivered those intermediate range passes and made him pay time and again turning third downs into first downs numerous times as well. Uh, never really got up and pressed. And like you said, Alan, never, you know, offered more bracket coverage or double coverage of David Bell either. So, hey, more power to him. And my, uh, and one thing I'm writing, I've got the, the, the totals for David Bell in three games against Iowa, Alan. <laughs> That's it's crazy. Almost, it's almost 40 catches. It's over 500 yards. I think four or five touchdowns. It's incredible. He's yeah. made a career. I joked with him after the game. I said, they're probably going to never let you back in this state again, David. And he, he just laughed, of course. And, and uh, yeah, he's, he's, had, he's had a knack for making life miserable for these guys. And if you recall, this was a school that he very heavily considered, and they recruited him very hard. Iowa, over the years, under Ference, has kind of gone to Indianapolis mm -hmm. and got numerous good players. And this was a guy they were after, too. And uh, I'm sure they would have loved to have seen him catching passes for them. But uh, Purdue's got David Bell, and good for Purdue, Allen. And, and four and two, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Purdue didn't get to four and two the way I envisioned or the way a lot of people envisioned. But four and two, we're at the halfway mark. And it, it's, it's, looking, it's looking pretty uh, sunshiny, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't that amazing <laughs> how two weeks difference can work and how that uh, comes to pass? Uh, yeah. You know, from that standpoint, it just is unbelievable, and that uh, that is what it's going to be. I think uh, uh, week in and week out, when you look at the, look at the situation, uh, you know, I thought T.J. Sheffield also yeah. caught the ball and made some plays, and yet Purdue would almost, if you if you wanted to build the uh, build the uh, scenario, if you're a, if you're a long suffering Purdue fan, you think about you think about things like well, wait. Mm -hmm. They, they get a tough call. They didn't get a bad call, but a bad break on the play in the end zone. Yeah. Durham drops a touchdown pass or at least had, or didn't catch one. I don't know if he dropped it. Uh, they had some things. It, they missed a field goal. Of course, so did Iowa. Uh, you know, all these things started to look kind of like things were going to go well. And then and then Purdue didn't seem to seem to bother them one bit. Handling adversity, Alan. Handling adversity. And uh, they always say, it doesn't matter what happens to you. What matters is how you react to what happens to you. And Purdue reacted well. And don't forget, too, there was a long, right after Purdue scored, Iowa had a long kickoff return to the oh, ninth yeah. yard line. You go, oh, well, after all that, you're going to, you know, you see this happen. And Purdue turned them away. I think on that series, Alan, Iowa went for it on fourth down and got stuffed, remember? Yeah. On a quarterback sneak. So the defense rose again to the occasion after. The kickoff team allowed that, that long return to the 19-yard line. So, again, uh, another instance of how good that defense played tonight. And, and Jeff Brom said afterward, Al, they play a lot of guys, too. And they try to keep guys fresh. And remember, there's no Corey Trice. Yeah. The best cornerback hasn't played since the UConn game, for crying out loud. Yeah. And they keep moving on, and they keep moving on. And, again, how much more can you say about Mark Hagan and Brad Lambert, Ron English, James Adams, that whole defensive staff's done a great job. Yeah, they have done a phenomenal job, and it's good, worthy now of, of discussion. Seven points, either we haven't even done that. I don't, how, do you, how do you even talk about the fact that you hold in a top five team? you got to go back, uh, uh, boy, I don't know when that's happened, when they've held top five. There. Top five, yeah. You'd probably be back in the 50s with Jack Mullenkoff uh, when they beat uh, – uh, beat Iowa or, or Northwestern or something like that. I mean, it's just uh, unheard of to shut them down like that. I know they're not a great offensive team. I don't think we expected that going in. We thought that gave Purdue a chance to 
get the job done. But still, uh, you still put all that in there, uh, and and you what it all shakes out is a, a stunning twenty four to seven win. And Purdue is the t- talk. And who would have thought this? The talk of college football tonight. Uh, you're going to be hard pressed to get them off the. If there were newspapers that did things, this would be uh, the, the lead story, certainly in the college football world. Yeah, you look at the Big Ten West race, Alan. There, there, there's nobody in this division that's really daunting. This was supposed to be your bellwether. Yeah. Wisconsin's supposed to be right there, too. But this is, again, considered to be a very flawed. Wisconsin team. They got a good defense, but their offense is very flawed. Minnesota, Nebraska, Illinois, Northwestern. I mean, Purdue's going to have a puncher's chance against all these teams in its own division. And then you have Michigan State coming to West Lafayette. You know, they're beatable, Allen. They, 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 they should have got beat today or could have very easily yeah. got beat by Indiana. Nebraska had them on the ropes a couple of weeks ago yeah. in East Lansing. So that's another game that you, 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 if you're Purdue, you like the chances, right? It's just the trip to Columbus, Ohio, the only one that sort of scares you. No one's going to admit that. But um, I guess my point is, Alan, there's a chance for a lot more wins. Yeah. And, and that's, that's better than the alternative. Yeah. And, 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 and I think everybody's got to be pleased that this, this program is energized by this one huge win. And, and now the possibilities, again, through the rest of this month of November, they're pretty wondrous. Yeah, if you if Purdue had Iowa's schedule from here on in, uh, you'd be sitting sitting pretty. The fact that you still are going to have to play two top ten ranked teams, at least ranked now in the top ten, Michigan State. Though Michigan State, I suppose, could drop. Although I don't think they will, because they did win on the road, and of course, Ohio State uh, still on the schedule. There will be no easy games, and we know that. And 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 that's not. We're not saying that for a second because Wisconsin, Purdue hasn't beaten Wisconsin since 1997 in Ross Age Stadium, yeah, and not at all since 2003. So you know you're gonna have to. You're still gonna have to exercise some demons, and you're gonna have to play a team uh, in Wisconsin that's gonna kind of come at it a little bit like Iowa did, but they're very very good defensively. So there's no layups. We all know that. And that's what's, but you know, it's even hard to figure out Minnesota going and beating Nebraska. Gosh, you know, maybe Minnesota's though. Minnesota's got uh, conference losses because they lost to Ohio state. So, you know, it's just going to be interesting to see Purdue will have an opportunity to play yeah. its way. I'm not going to say Indianapolis just yet. Uh, but I think if you win the next, if you win the next two and, and if Iowa plays like it's, you know, Purdue now leads them in the loss column, Again, I know we're looking way down the road here, uh, but uh, you know you, there certainly are possibilities. You have a lot to play for, and, and mainly what I think you have to play for if you're Purdue, you have to play for the fact that is your program building a foundation? Is it moving in the right direction? And today's result is an emphatic yes, and you got to follow it up. And you'll be hearing that from Jeff Brom at about 11.01 a.m. on uh, Monday about just how that has to happen. But uh, you still have got you can put this one in your in your back pocket, enjoy it for a day or two, and then also dream of the possibilities because they're there. Yeah, exactly right. Well said, my friend. Um, and um, they've still got things they have to clean up. I understand that, uh, but give them give them credit. They found solutions, Alan. Yeah, and you gotta you always have to whatever you're doing in life, you always got to be adaptable and evolving. And they're willing to try things. And you talked about it earlier, you know, and Jeff mentioned it when he spoke to the media afterward. You know, he, he thought maybe this, no, he wasn't sure if this is going to work. He's going to yep. look bad. But you know what? You can't be fearful. And they knew they had to try something. You know what the definition of insanity is, right? Yep. So you got to try something. And, and they, they've certainly done that. And that's coaching, right? Yep. That's what you get paid to do. And they did exactly that. They found solutions on offense, improved that side of the ball, and the defense continues to hum too, Alan, and more than carry its weight. Special teams remains a work in progress, to put it kindly. Um, it was good to see uh, Mitchell Fenron hit his last field goal at least and got to keep him on track because he can end up having to win a winning game for you. I thought Jack Ansel did fine tonight as well, punting the football. So return games with – cover teams you know there's still work to do there you hate you hate for that to cost you game alan 
and it certainly cost him the Rutgers game last year. Yeah, yeah, he had a, had a long return there in a, in a game that looked like it could have changed the changed the. Uh, it, and I wasn't sure what Purdue was doing, and I'm, you know, it'd be a fair question to ask Jeff Brom about. Well, why are you not? Or maybe they couldn't. I know the wind was there was a lot of wind on that direction, oh, and, and and I think I didn't take that into a consideration. But they couldn't couldn't kick it out of the end zone, and then yeah. Iowa gets a chance to return, and that's uh, that. I'm sure is the answer. The other thing I think that in last we'll talk about was you know Jeff Brom, and he's had some detractors certainly because things haven't gone as well as you would have liked uh, until this afternoon. But one thing he is, is he is hyper competitive. You know, he hates to lose. And, and I think that's a thing that that coaches and coaches can make them really good and, and, and make them good if they can channel that in the, in the right direction. And, and he's, I think, learning to do that. And but I think that you take a loss like Minnesota, you don't want your players to like, start to like losing. It's obvious that he's been able to get his team to believe they don't like losing either. and They shouldn't be losing. And, and uh, somehow, some way. That message must have gotten across because yeah. I thought the confidence level was astounding to me. They just played like they act, acted like they'd been there. And, and uh, that part of it, uh, I think, was a good thing. In this environment, too, Alan. Yeah, right. This was a sold out crowd. You've been here before. It's intimidating. The yeah. bleachers are right on top of the stands. Homecoming weekend, uh, coming off a huge win against Penn State, number two in the country. I can go on and on. This was the den that Purdue had to walk into. And like you said, they carried their, themselves with confidence, like, like they should be here. No intimidation at all. Their knees didn't buckle when they hit adversity, which we talked about earlier as well. And that's a great sign, right? Uh, act like you've been there. And they certainly did that and more. Again, on this grand stage on national television, on ABC, uh, nonetheless, too. So, yeah, I'm, uh, it, it's a good building block. And you're right, Jeff Brom, he's, he's competitive. He's tougher than nails, too, I tell you that. Just when you talk to him after practices, you get that sense of competitiveness just in sometimes the way he holds his body language and the way he talks and, and, and stresses different words. You can really get that sense. And... You know, he, he's not going to suffer any fools and you better be tough and prepared and, uh, and competitive if you're going to play for him. You're going to have attrition sometimes, Alan. Some guys don't like all that. Yep. And some fans wig out when guys leave the program. It happens everywhere, Alan. Yep. There's players leaving all the time everywhere. So Purdue's not unique. And Jeff Brom's a guy like a lot of coaches who demands a lot from his people and – I think here, nights like this, Alan, will make more and more people buy into what he's selling. Yeah, and that, and that, if that can be the result of the 2021 season, that they're back on track, no matter where it finishes, it's starting to look like it's got a good opportunity to finish in the postseason, which would be a step in the right direction. But this is one game that yeah. you can say after this year, this is evidence that we can play and we can do a certain things. You, now you got to go out and prove it week in and week out, and we understand that, and that's what's going to be an interesting storyline. So it's going to be an interesting week, uh, Purdue-Wisconsin week. A sold out ross Eight Stadium October 23rd. That would be next Saturday, 3 p.m. Yeah. Tom, we're going to let you get back to work and finish it. to have safe travels back to West Lafayette. Yes. Uh, it, you know, it, being, in the, being in Iowa, is, is a, it's a great venue and a great place to go to a college football game. Yeah. Uh, Purdue just kept it pretty quiet today, and that was a, that was a great result for the Boilermakers. So – uh, thanks again, Tom. I want to thank our sponsor, the Union Club Hotel, and they, we appreciate them. There will be a hop in place in, at the Union Club uh, prior to next week's sellout game against Wisconsin. It's also Hammer Down Cancer Day for the Purdue Center for Cancer Research. Uh, I'll keep that in mind as well as we look forward to what will be a very interesting week in Purdue football. And a reminder, too, we have a lot of basketball stuff in today's scrimmage, uh, really good scrimmage today. You're going to like, Tom, you're, you're going to like watching this basketball team. I mean, I just watch them uh, scrimmage today. Uh, really uh, going to be interesting and, and fun to watch and to see how Matt Painter puts it. A lot that. of people are excited. You know that. Well, he should be because, I mean, I know this is – this is, but when they were playing against each other today – uh, it just, it really was, they were going after it and I was having a hard time determining who the best five was. And that's a good problem to have 
Uh, Matt Painter will figure this one out. Uh, there are there are twelve guys when you when you add Brian Waddell, who's who's going to uh, redshirt this year. They've got twelve guys who can play, and and I thought they all did uh, well today. So again, thanks to all for checking out the site and uh, we'll have a good week of uh, a lot of stuff coming back and heck even brian newbert newbert's going to return to the continental u.s that's a good thing as well and we'll look forward to having brian working too so tom safe travels thanks again and we'll see you next week on our saturday simulcast